A defibrillator is an electrical device which is used on someone suffering a cardiac arrest. They are most commonly used in hospitals, however, there has recently been an increase in public access defibrillators, which are located in popular areas such as airports, shopping centres, train stations and community centres. In the UK, 270 children die each year due to a cardiac arrest at school. We investigated how many young adults would know how to use a public access defibrillator. I asked some of the students at Yeovil College what their thoughts were on the subject. Do you know what a defibrillator is? Yeah, it starts the person's heart into normal rhythm after they've had a heart attack. I know what it is, but I don't really know how to use one. When someone goes into cardiac arrest, and then you go, Psh. <laughs> Did you know that there was a defibrillator on campus? No. No. No, I did not know that there was. No. I didn't know. Where would you, if you had to guess, where do you reckon it would be? I would say the lobby. Like in reception somewhere? Probably near the cafe in the main reception, because that's where loads of people are. Like reception or something like that. And why? What's the reasoning behind that? It's quite central and there's always a lot of people around it. It's actually in the sports hall. What do you think about it being in this location? Um, it's understandable because like people exercise there, but surely if not many people go there, it'd be better to have it in a more populated area. If someone suffered a cardiac arrest right now, would you know how to use a defibrillator? Definitely not. No, not at all. Absolutely not, no. Um, no, not fully, but I know how it works and all the systems and everything. Yes, I'm actually um, level two first aid trained. Do you reckon the college should offer any support or lessons of how to use a defibrillator? I reckon it would be very helpful if they did. And how do you think the college should go about teaching this? Through like videos or how do you reckon people would learn best? I would say on a practical basis, visual, yeah. Yeah, like run a course or something to like inform people how to use one. Just maybe in like tutor or something they could just tell us about it or have special days off where we could learn about it. If college were to do a training course on how to use defibrillators, would you take this course? Yeah, probably. Most likely, yeah. I would, yes. Yeah, I think I would. Defibs nowadays, they're very, very easy to use, so they actually tell you they literally shout at you, they tell you what to do. So they will tell you when to touch the person and when not to, not to get, you know, the electric shock as well. Uh. When assessing a patient, you use doctor's ABC. This is dangerous. Response. Airways. Breathing and circulation. If they are not breathing and have no airway blockage, then you will need to use the defibrillator. Begin by removing all clothing from the patient's chest. Cut clothing if needed. Look carefully at the pictures on the white adhesive pads. Place pad exactly as shown in the picture. Press firmly to patient's bare skin. When the first pad is in place, no one should touch the patient. Analyze it. No one should touch the patient. Analyze it. Shock advised. Stay clear of patient. Shock delivered. Be sure the ambulance service has been called. It is safe to touch the patient. Start CPR. Place the heel of one hand in the center of the chest between the nipples. Place your other hand on top of the first. Push the chest down firmly five centimeters. Keep time with the beat. Continue 
with compression. As well as being used in emergency situations, defibrillators can also be used to correct an irregular heartbeat. We spoke to Michael Churchill, a 73-year-old man who has had some experience with a defibrillator in the past. My name's Michael Churchill and I'm 73 years old. I went to the doctor for just a regular checkup, and he found out by taking my pulse that something was wrong. And he, was, he asked me if I was tired or puffy, puffed out, and well, I said no, I didn't realise anything was wrong. So he there and then set up and I had an ECG, um, which showed that the heart was not beating regularly. So he immediately put me on warfarin, which you take to stop blood clots. Um, and then after that he made an appointment for me to go to the hospital, which I did. Um, went in for, for just in for to a bed for a day or part of the day they just you just take your top off and the nurse shaved my chest um, and then they obviously give you general anesthetic of course and then I was gone I didn't know anything until they woke me up I was very nervous before we went in um, but it was just the same and it the first time it didn't work at all whereas the second time the heart went back into rhythm um, and I think it lasted for two weeks and then it went back to its oddity again I just like I say you see someone on the television who's on a hot crash bang you know that was all I'd ever thought about them I mean nowadays you see them up in moors and different places in towns, don't you, and things like that. Yeah. On the other hand, we spoke to Mandy and her family, who've had experience with a defibrillator. They were willing to share their powerful story with us. So, uh, my name is Nick Hobbs, I'm 58 at the moment. I'm Mandy Hobbs and I'm 56. I'm Samantha Hobbs and I'm 22. So, um, October the 1st, 2012, um, woke up, it was a Monday morning, woke up um, to get, go to work and discovered that Mandy, my wife, was in bed and uh, she was totally still, not moving. So, uh, reached a state of uh, panic and uh, rang for an ambulance and uh, at that time, uh, Samantha, the daughter who was sleeping next door, came into the room and started uh, CPR. Yeah, luckily I'd been trained in CPR because I used to attend my local life-saving club on a Friday night at my local swimming pool. Um, so I started CPR, so I did that for about four or five minutes, but it's quite tiring. So then, because my dad hadn't been trained in what to do, and then instructed him what to do, and between us, we kept this going and on the phone to the ambulance at the same time until they came, which was about six or seven minutes later. So when they came, they carried on the CPR um, and then used a defibrillator. Luckily, one shot was enough to get my mum's heart back, um, which was a big relief uh, at the time. Yeah, so, uh, sort of, Mandy was in hospital for well, in intensive care for sort of two weeks uh, in an induced coma. Um, in those circumstances, they kind of they like to cool the body down to give it the best chance of recovery. Gradually brought her out of the coma, and uh, fortunately, she. Uh, eventually responded and uh, she was then able to find out what had happened and spent a total of six weeks in hospital and uh, mm -hmm. you obviously don't remember anything about the actual event. No, not at all. But they sent me to Taunton to have an ICD fitted which I've got under my skin so if my heart stops it will kick in and also regulates my heart if it goes too fast I can put it right. Touch word, I, it's never gone off. So I'm very lucky. And lucky, luckily that uh, the ambulance was sort of fairly close to us, so the defibrillator was uh, was there quite quickly, which was the sort of key to survival or not. And uh, as a result of that, Samantha's been doing sort of campaigning around CPR and defibrillators in public places since then. Yeah, so after the event, I realised that I was lucky that I'd received the training, um, but realised that a lot of my friends 
didn't know what to do if it happened to somebody that they knew or if they came across a stranger in the street. Um, so I've campaigned for CPR to be taught in schools as part of the national curriculum, so I've done media work, been up to the Houses of Parliament and things like that. Um, but also, like my dad said, having a defibrillator is so important and there's so many defibrillators that are available in schools and businesses and things like that, which is brilliant. But equally, you need something that's available to the public and something that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because it can happen at any time. So I've done a lot of work speaking to the council, the ambulance service, people like that around hopefully getting some more public access to defibrillators in Yeovil. Luckily they had that defibrillator and they were able to come so quickly, sort of in the six or seven minutes that it took them.